Welcome back to Good Germs Off-Road Adventures. Now I know what you're thinking, both of you that are watching. You're thinking, what is this wannabe Jeep doing on the channel? Well, let me tell you, we use this to pull extra quads out to the desert on our flatbed. It's the V6 model with the four-wheel drive and it does a pretty good job. But because it's used in our adventures and on our camping, well, the work it needs, it deserves, in my mind, at least to be on the channel. What are we doing? Well, it's got some clunking, you know, in the front end, and these, these Cherokees, they're known for that. This is a 2015. Among the other issues, like the transmission that just likes to slam into third and fourth gear sometimes that there is no fix for, according to Jeep and Mopar, they can reprogram it as many times as they want, and it just keeps doing it. But um, we've got some clunking in the front end. Now, we've already replaced the struts and the upper strut mounts, so that's all pretty new. We've inspected the... CV axle, you know, the things that make the wheels turn when you're driving forwards and backwards. Inspected those, the boots are good, nothing's leaking, nothing's rattling loose, everything's nice and tight. But uh, when you put it in drive and you go forward, you get a little clunk. When you push the brakes, you get a clunk. When you put it in reverse, you get a clunk. You push the brakes, you get a clunk. So anytime you do something to move forward or backwards or to stop, you know, the moving the forwards and the backwards, you get a clunk. And all the research I can find, if everything else is good, all the research is pointing to control arm bushings. And, uh, well, you can't replace the bushings. You have to replace the control arms. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and do that. Let me uh, get you in here and we'll take a look at, uh, we'll also look at the upper strut mounts, you know, that are held together with Legos pretty much. Um, we'll look at that and then uh, we'll get you into the parts we've ordered and we'll get we'll get to wrenching and, and doing the things. Stick around. Before we get into the lower part of the suspension, let me show you what I'm talking about with the Lego struts, as I like to call them. You'll have to excuse, you know, the dirt right about there. Not so much there. Well, actually all of it's quite dirty. But uh, let me show you. Here's the upper strut mount pop this guy off this is what holds your uh strut from falling out of the car there's this little lego clip and yeah that's pretty new and uh, you think maybe there's something wrong with this one nope we'll go over to this side and pop this cap and you can see it you know it turns to not as much as the other side I, and i don't know why i don't know why the mopar folks think you should mount suspension, you know, with plastic clips. I, I just, I don't understand. Well, let's have a look at the parts we're putting in. You can see we ordered T, whoops, there we go. TRQ, Trusted, Reliable, Quality. Oddly, that's the brand. So in the brand name itself, it's telling you, you know, trust it. But really the biggest reason we ordered these, price, you know, these parts can get expensive. But also, these actually have some DOT approvals or certifications or whatever. So these, I'm hoping, are pretty good qualities. But let's have a look at what we have here. Okay. This is a, a kit. We've got sway bar end links. Two of those. We have ball joints. We may or may not put these in. The condition of the ones in the car might be still good, but more importantly, I don't have a ball joint press. There's another one. And here we get into, ooh, can you see that? There we go. There's a control arm. And, well, there's another one. I don't know which one's rattling, but, you know, it doesn't make sense to me to just do one. Anything else in there? Nope, that's it. All right. Well, let's, you know, get this up in the air and get started. Now, I know we're taking front suspension off wheels, A-arms, all that, and you can't do that on the ramps. But listen, we have stuff to take off before we can do that, and we can't get to those with jacks in the way. I'll bring you in and show you what we're looking at. All right, so in order to get the A-arms or control arms off, you have to take this part of the bumper off. And there's a couple of frame rails up in the front, little subframe rails that have to come off, but those are 
up above a skid plate. I, it's not really a skid plate. Let me show you what it is under here. This thing. So this air water protector or skid plate, I don't know what it's really, what its purpose is, but it's got to come out and I need access to all of the underside to get this out. So we're going to start with the ramps, get it out. Then we're going to jack it up, get it off the ground. Then we can start pulling off, you know, the frame rails. <laughs> we're just going to go ahead and start, you know, at the back side. These look like they're all 10 millimeter bolts and I do have my 10 millimeter socket. Make sure you get some kind of magnetic tray to put all your bolts in. You know, losing bolts is no fun. You know, I saw a video somewhere of a mechanic, and it was an actual mechanic, wondering why this little oil filter door was here when they were working on a 3.2 liter like this is, and doing an oil change, and on a 3.2 liter, the oil filter's on top. But if you actually read the door, it tells you why. It says, oil filter, except 3.2 liter. The 2.4, if you have the four cylinder, the oil filter is actually behind this door. They could have worded this better, but look, if you're a mechanic, and this wasn't like Jiffy Lube, it was an actual mechanic shop, and uh, he posted some video online complaining about this door being here when the filter's on top. Come on, just read the door. It's not hard. And that just slides off. Oh boy. Oh boy, let's just, you know, let's just shove this back out of the way. Yeah! That may have been too far. All right, I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna point it, what we gotta take out. So, that frame rail and that frame rail, they have to come out to change these control arms. Um, I'm gonna see if there's a way I can unbolt it without taking this entire you know, this thing off the car. That would be, that would be nice. But uh, everything I've read says this has to come off, but we're gonna try it, see how far we get. But now that we're exposed under here, see I can't put any jack or jack stands on these cause they have to come out. But I can get some jacks, jack it a little further back, maybe get some jack stands. Well, I guess back by the jacking points, I just needed to get access to all of this you know, first. All right, we've got the Jeep in the air. It's floating now. I'm gonna leave the jack stand here, or not the jack stand, the jack. I'm gonna leave this here just in case. We'll just kind of work around it, unless it really gets in the way. But for now, you can really see what we're looking at. These are the frame rails that have to come out. And they have to come out because if you don't take them out, can't get that bolt out. Frame rail's gotta come out, and everything I've read says this has to come off, but it almost looks like I can pull this down far enough maybe to uh, you know scrape the knuckles and get to the three bolts, one, two, and one on the other side that are on the back side of this that hold it in. I might be able to just scrape the knuckles enough to get in there and pull those out. I don't really know, we'll see. We've got probably the same on this side. There's also supposed to be some sort of hanger, but I think once we loosen this up, the little fender thing, we'll be able to see if it's actually here on this one. 
Um, well, let's go ahead and get started. We'll get the wheels off. We'll get some of this unbolted. Then we'll scrape the knuckles and see what we can do. All right, check this out. Because, you know, this isn't really, I don't think anyway, correct me in the comments, but I don't think this was designed or even built in the United States, even though it says Jeep, it's pretty much, I, I think, a Fiat. Anyway, could be wrong. Put it in the comments. If you know the real story on these Cherokees, let me know. But everything in here seems, you know, Italian, European. But the lug bolts, yes, I said bolts. These aren't nuts. These are bolts. They're supposed to be 19 millimeters. So this is a 19 millimeter socket. But when you go to put this on here, it doesn't really fit. It's really tight, and if I was to push it all the way on there, I'd have to use a hammer to get it back off. And this used to fit. I know Ford has had an issue with lug nuts swelling. Pretty certain that's the problem we have here. This one might fit, but by the time I put some torques on this, it's just gonna get stuck. So I had to buy this 20 millimeter because what I can't find is a 19 and a half millimeter. If somebody, look, if somebody knows where to get one or if they have an extra one, let me know. But I had to use this 20 millimeter. It's, at least it goes on all the way. I don't think it'll get stuck. It's not an impact socket, it's a chrome one, but it's pretty heavy. I think it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. There we go. Well, this, uh, you know, this Aircat guy here, it just kind of scares the bolts right off. It doesn't even try. It just looks at them wrong and scares them off. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, let's, I guess, take some more stuff off. Sure. All right, we got you in a little closer. We just took that off and it looks like we just have to get this clip and that clip out. I might have tools for that, but you know, I don't know. We'll see. I think this all can stay mainly because I don't want to take it out. I'm going to, you know, try this the way of breaking the is this this jack is just in the way. Can we just move it? Okay. All right, so I can get to, let's see, there's a bolt there. There's one there. Can I reach the other one? Where is it? Oh, it's way up here. How am I gonna reach that? Can I get? Well, I think I've got some bad news. I think it's going to have to come out. Now we got to figure that out. What's well? What makes it? You know what? What is it attached to? Uh, here. Yeah, it's attached here. Okay. What else is it? It's attached to something. You know, up on the up on the upside. Because I just don't think I can get. To the top there's a bolt there's the other bottom bolt i just don't think oh wait i found it yeah i got to it can i get a wrench on it maybe what about the other side the bottom two yep the top one yeah you know oh there's something in the way well, I hate to say it, but this fascia, this thing, you know, it is just going to have to come off. Dang it. Well, we're exactly where we didn't want to be. This, it's got to come off. Well, 
let's see if we can figure out how to get it off. Okay, maybe a screw here, a screw there. All the ones across the bottom, they're already off. And we're upside down, so don't get, you know, don't get car sick. There's a little bolt there. But that is, you know, that's, that's everything that's on the bottom. So where are the rest of it? Is there anything inside there? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Maybe in there. I don't really know. Looks like I see some clips. Clips are scary. I don't really care for clips. Maybe we should do some research on the uh, internets. Let's go do that. Okay, I think that's everything. All in all, it wasn't too bad except for the two rivets that I had to drill out that, that I was not prepared for. So I'm gonna have to replace on those, but I think I think we've got everything. Yeah. What you didn't see is there is a wiring harness back here that connects the fog lights. And apparently that entire wiring harness with the fog lights comes off with the front bumper assembly, the headlights and the running light, turn indicators, those just stay. But here's the scary part. We just have to start prying on this and you know, that's scary. So let's just, let's see what happens. Ow. Yeah, I don't like that. And this is just all, you know, clips, plastic clips. Maybe I shouldn't sit down for this. Maybe I should be standing up. I, I tell you, this is scary because I'm sure this bumper is easily $1,000. And then you have to have it painted if you break it. But it doesn't look like things are breaking. It does look like it's coming loose. That is unbolted there. So... Oi. Did I unbolt that? Yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah. Well, let's just get a light and double check. Let's just double check that I unbolted it. There's no surprises in here. That's unbolted. Yeah, that's unbolted. Oh, yep, see? Always check before you just yank. And that is, surprise, surprise, another 10 millimeter. After we get this out, look, I'm going to, well, you can't see me. There you go. After I get this out, I'm going to give you a look. It's a lot of 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolts on this. If you are prone to losing 10 millimeter sockets, don't work on a Jeep. Um, anyway, yeah, let's get those out and get this thing back off. Mm-hmm. Well, where did it go? Oh, there it is. It is a sneaky little devil. Might as well get this one. Yep. So you always check. If something is fighting on you, always check before you just yank it. You don't want to break it. Or maybe you do want to break it. I don't want to break it, but 
you know. I don't need that right now, and that was completely unnecessary. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, this side's much easier. Oh, all right. Well, I think I think it's going to come off. Let's see. How can we hold it here? Oh, what am I stuck on? Nope, I'm not stuck on anything. Oh. Okay, well, let's just set this down. All this, because what we're after <laughs> is these bolts right here. We need to get these bolts off to get that, you know, other frame bit out, but goodness, this is a view of the Jeep I did not ever want to see. Yep, that's a bumper. Oh, yeah, before I forget, remember I was telling you about all the 10 millimeter bolts. Let me show you what I mean. Those are all 10 millimeter bolts. So if you lost your 10 millimeters, you're, uh, you know, I would say you're screwed, but you would actually be the opposite of screwed because you ain't screwing these without the 10 millimeter. So uh, I guess you would say you're unscrewed. Sure. Thankfully, all of these black ones they held the body bits together, and they're all exactly the same shape and size. At least there's one thing I feel like they did to make it easy. Anyway, back to work. Oh, look. Y'all can talk nonsense on the Harbor Freight, but I'm good with that. I like Harbor Freight. This is just a Hercules, this is just a 3 8 you know, 20 volt. And, um... Wow, I did not expect these to pop out of here. Harbor Freight, if you're listening, send me money or tools. I'm good either way. Does that come off? Nope, I think it's held in place there, but that's the three bolts we needed there. Uh, all right, let's get under it and see what else we have to take off. I don't remember. Oh, that's a bigger one. Well, let's go find a bigger one. Sure. Okay. Well, those are 15. These are bigger. If it was Japanese, I would say let's go to 17. We're going to try that. Anyway, those are not, those are bigger than 17. Well, I guess they should be. They hold the frame together. Is it 18? Yeah, it's 18. Well, let's see if this little guy will take these off. Probably not. But let's see. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. I wonder if this is going to fall on me. I'm also kind of wondering if I should have done a different... Where did that boat go now? I need that later. Okay. All right, well, it had to work hard. Oh, that's a long one. It had to work hard, but it's still. Look, this, <laughs> I cannot believe what this little air gun is doing. Not air gun. Did I say air gun? Impact gun. I cannot believe what this thing is getting done. And there we go. Okay, sorry for all the racket, except, nope, not really sorry for the racket. Let's just scoot that over. Okay, so now we've got one of these fancy bolts here, we've got another one here, and then we have the, you know, this is the, the thing that spins the, holds it, the ball joint. You know what I'm talking about. How much you want to bet that's another 18? Can we take it off? with this gun, or is it an 18? Let's check it first. Yep, it's an 18. Let's see if this bolt, this thing will do it. Ah, oh, 
easy. And we'll have to, you know, obviously that doesn't work, but we have, we have some special sockets for those, unfortunately. All right, so I'm going to get you in here and you can see some of the odd bolts. This hat is crooked. Well, if I put it straight, it just doesn't fit on the head. I have a weird and very large head. And if I, um, anyway, my hats are deformed because my head is deformed, apparently. Anyway, that's enough chitter chatter. Chitter chatter, chit chat, nonsense. That's what we're doing. We're doing nonsense. Anyway, we've got some odd bolts in here. Um, I don't know why, but oh, let me, let me just, let me show you. There's that guy that's got to come out um if anybody knows what the name of these are you know put it in the comments i don't know what these are called other than just annoying anyway we have that one and then we do have another one on the bottom side kind of there and you know of course they're not the same size so we did the right thing and we bought some tools and we made this kit and you can see all the different, and they're impact sockets, so we're going to impact on them. I don't know what those are. Uh, but we basically bought two kits because I needed this one and this one. This is a 20, this is an 18, but look, two different kits. Titan, I don't know. You know, I think that's from... O'Reilly and then the next one here that's from the AutoZone so you know I had to piece together two different kits to have enough then I had some other smaller ones that I've already had which you know don't fit anything on this car so 2018 we're gonna see if the little uh we're gonna see if this little guy you know can break those off too is this gonna come loose with uh is that the right one Yep. Nope. We need, uh, you know, we're going to need the big impact gun. Sure. Okay. Well, let's see. Sure. We'll come back to that. Let's go ahead and take this bottom one out here and see if loosening this whole thing up will help. Uh-oh. 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 Uh -oh. Um, well, that's not great. And there's a, a, a nut, you know, on the top. This doesn't feel like it would skip, but I think it's bouncing off. Like if I hold it, it's got plenty of grip, but it's got a nut on the top that we're going to have to get, um, 18. Sure. Let's see if it's an 18. I'll just stick a socket on it. Well, that ain't going to fit. Well, let's go grab an 18 wrench. Oh, that's got a lot of play. I don't like that. All right, let's try this again. Hopefully we don't, you know, destroy this bolt. That's what I'm saying. Oh. It's amazing when you use the tools, it works. Okay. Very good. Now what? Oh, now we're still dealing with this. Sure. How, how are we gonna, how do we get it? It doesn't want to. Okay. Well, don't say I didn't warn you, car. How much more do I have to get it down? Like, not too much farther, I guess. 
can't see. Putting the new one is going to be a hoot. Oh, wait. Oh, that worked. So we're just going to move that. There we go. And now how do we get this out? I don't know. Do we just pry on it? No. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the question will be, how hard is the new one going to be to go back in? Now, it looks like this back bushing, like I kind of thought, is just completely shot. Can I, how do we, can I move this to the front side now? Oh, we got it. Truth be told, I don't think it looks, well, it is torn a bit, but I don't know that it really looks all that bad. Is there anything else in here that could be banging around? Nope, everything else is nice and tidy. Now, let me get you in here so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is what I'm looking at. Is this guy. But it looks like it might be torn. right in here a little bit but i'm just not sure i don't know if it's that if that one was loose i don't think so that was that one felt pretty snug the rubber looks to be in pretty good shape you can see um so we're just gonna you know pretend that this was all of our problems and all right, well, next we're going to go ahead and replace on the sway bar link because we have a new one. And I wonder if I should go ahead and put an Allen in there and or if this will just snap it off. Let's see. Yeah, well, that works. Probably should use an Allen. Let's see how the bottom one does because I... The impact won't reach, so I'm going to use this ratcheting socket thing, and oh yeah, see that won't even get it. No, nope. now it's stuck on there. Give it back. So we're going to put this guy on, and then we're going to put that on, and then we're going to see if it'll break loose. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy. Are you even seeing this? I don't know. Okay. All right. So first you can see here's the, you know, the old control arm. If I get in close, you can see a lot of this rubber is just missing. You've got it torn here. Here's the new one. And it has a lot more rubber in it. So hopefully that means it works. Sure. And then, of course, you have the sway bar links, the old one, and the new one. I'm sure the old one's just fine, but we're just going to go ahead and replace on it with the new one. Just, you know, we have it. Let's just put it on. The bolt size, nuts, threads, all of that, I did confirm. They're exactly the same, so that's nice. The length seems to be the same, but you know, as long as it's close, nobody cares. You know, and this also might help with not dropping the suspension when I'm trying to put the 
I don't know. I'm just talking nonsense. Don't listen to me. Mm -hmm. Sure. So we'll put this on. Feed this through the middle. If you wonder how much torques to give it, just give it, just give it, you know, all, all of the torques. Make sure nobody can ever take it off again. There we go. And let's just check on that. Oh yeah, that ain't, that ain't going nowhere, except for where it's supposed to. Okay, I think you have to put this side in first. Yep, doesn't want to. Is this in the way? Can we move it? Oy, it's heavy. Well, how do you... Oh, wait, there we go. Should we put the bolt in just to keep it, you know, in that spot for now? Sure. Um, so, I don't know if this is good or not. Ugh. Bring you in. See what I'm talking about. I'm going to zoom you in to what I'm looking at. You see the hole there? Now watch when I put the bolt in it. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but that hole, you know, it's not round. It's not the right shape. I'm wondering if that is normal. Anybody have any of these? Any mechanics watching this? Probably not. Let me know if that's normal. That doesn't... It looks like it's worn. It doesn't look normal to me, but, you know, maybe somebody can let me know. But, I mean, obviously I'm going to put this in, but I just... That doesn't look right to me. Sure. I'm not going to tighten it. just want to leave that loose. See if this will pivot around. Now's a good opportunity. You can see how these things are supposed to work. All right. It's, uh, okay. You see that? Now watch when I push on this, you can see how this thing pivots. See that? So your entire pivoting on the back end of this is literally just flexing in rubber. Anyway, let's see if we can get this thing on here now. It doesn't necessarily want to do it. Do we do we tap it into place? That's scary, but let's where's my here it is. Let's see. Um 
that kind of works. I wonder if we should pry it. Maybe that's a better idea. How do you pry it up? Maybe you just keep tapping it. Like that. And then you... Oh, careful, don't push it off the jack stands. That was slightly scary. Let me tell you. See, that doesn't quite fit yet. Uh. Okay. I think it still needs to go up a little more. It really needs to go in. How are we going to make it go in without damaging many things? Not easily. Where's the pry bar? Is it possible to pry it in? I don't know. How would we do that? Like this, I guess? Oh, I feel like that's real close. Up. Oh. There we go. That may or may not be in the threads. It feels like it's in the threads. Okay, now let's get let's get the suspension. Let's get the ball joint set in the hole. How do we do that? You push it down and then you bring it over like that. Okay, I think. Yep. Yeah. That's that's in the hole there. Well, I think we do the thing. We tighten them up. Sure. Okay. And, you know, we'll check torque on these in a bit. And again, like I said, if you don't know how many torques to put something, just give it, just give it all of the torques until your forearm and your elbow just explode then you know that it's torqued Sorry about the noise with the compressor. If somebody feels the need to donate, you know, a super duper nice, quiet compressor, by all means, I won't turn it down. Any day now, you can click. Any day now. Come on. Keep going any farther and my elbow is going to explode. How does it go again? Does it, does it go like that? Do you, you know, you remember, does it go this way? I think it goes that way. Yeah, that's what I think. Could be wrong. Definitely wrong. Maybe I should put the bolts in here first. Oh. 
Okay. Okay, I think the best way to do this is let's get all of these just, you know, in here started. We'll tighten, snug these up because this is supposed to be able to move. Sure. Okay, that's all the threads. Okay, so yeah, let's tighten these back here or up here in the front first and then we'll We'll grab those. How to? I, oy, I'm too old for this. up what do you think I think that's it should we give it some more sure nope 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 Nope. Okay. Well, this side is finished. Now we're going to do that side. Um, all right. Let's just uh, I'll just go do that side next. Okay. Well, now that that side's done, let's uh, go to the other side. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Wait a minute. Well, that's shiny and new. Hey, this side's already done. How'd that happen? Yeah, that, that was a bad joke. I just did that other side while y'all weren't looking. But let's go look at the uh, control arm that came off. It is significantly worse than the other one. Okay, here we go. You can see this one is completely separated uh, and it fought me coming out and the front side was getting ready to come apart but the the rear side of this rubber bushing it is completely just you know it's done it's separated so probably a good thing we went ahead and did this well we've got the suspension you know put back together so we're just going to re-time lapse it and you know put all of this, you know, back on. about done here let's go ahead and get this back on the ramp so we can put the underbelly back no no we still have to put the tires on that <laughs> we don't need tires sure okay apparently we do need some tires you know a lot of master mechanics and people on the internet they'll tell you don't use torque sticks don't use torque sticks listen I use torque sticks, but I don't use it to set the torque. I use it to keep from over torquing. And then after I'm done, I go back and I actually set the actual torque. So this car calls for a hundred foot pounds. Well, this is an 80 foot pounds torque stick. 
So I'm going to run this in, run all these in with this. Then after I set the car on the ground, I'm going to go back and torque all the lug bolts, not nuts, torque all the lug bolts to the 100 pounds that I'm supposed to. But for now, we use the torque stick just so we don't have to think too much and we don't over tighten and break anything. and put the underbelly on and torque the wheels and then, then, we'll finally be done with this year project. Goodness. So, I lied. That's not it. Stuff to put the underbelly back on. You were there when I took it out. Look, it's just the same as putting it back. You don't need to see it. Just, you know, we'll pretend that it's already done and we'll take it for a test drive. Well, and there we go. The wife is taken for a test drive. We'll see how it does. Yep. Okay, so how is it? No more. No more clunking. No more clunking. Well, that's good. Well, that'll do it. You heard it from the wife, from the mouth. No more clunking. So I say approved. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. I would appreciate it if you do the whole like, subscribe thing. And, uh, you know, we'll see you next time. I'm tired. I, I need to get a bath and, you know some beverages and a nap. See you later.